All right, guys, today we're gonna to be looking at the Plus XTG0089. What? Oh. The 9800 GTX Plus. You guys have been waiting for this for a while. This is the new, uh, how do you say, reincarnation of 9800. It's not, you know, too much different. There's nothing crazy about it. It's just a plus. It's a little plus at the end, but it's a big plus for you. Uh, so what they've done on this processor, on the GPU on this thing, is pretty much it's just a die shrink. Uh, they shrunk it from 65 nm to 55 nm. Now, what does that mean for you? That means that you're going to be able to overclock it more. It's going to run cooler. It's going to run uh, more efficient, and uh, it's going to be a better overall card for you. Now, if you're having the question, can I run a 90? GTX with a 9900 GTX Plus? The answer is yes, and it doesn't matter if it's a super clocked or an SSC, they're going to all be compatible. You just got to make sure that you overclock them. Well, it'll automatically do it when you run them in SLI and overclock, that they're going to be at the same frequencies uh, for everything, for the GPU and for the shaders and all that good stuff. So, pretty much, again, we got a G92 uh, GPU, just like you would have had on the 8800 GT, but they made it smaller. So more transistors, smaller area. It makes it cheaper for them. It makes it cooler, better for the environment. So everything is going to be much, much better. Now, on top of that, though, since they didn't want to just kind of like bore you with a card that's just more efficient, who cares? Uh, they also, you know, decided to go ahead and uh, clock it faster. So this is definitely faster. Now, uh, talking about some of the specs on this card, uh, core clock on this is 738 megahertz. Okay, so remember, 55, not 65, and it's 738. Before it was 675 on the 9900 GTX, the non-overclock, just the regular uh, 9900 GTX was 675, so you got a nice increase in the core clock. 128 stream processors, just as you did before. You know, the architecture didn't change, but that's still the same. Uh, those stream processors, the shader clock, or those shaders uh, are operating at 1836 megahertz. So that is faster than before as well. And if you want to talk about the memory on this thing, let's see, we got GDDR3 is the type, 512 is the amount, the bit is 256 wide, the interface is 256 bit wide, and it's operating at 2200 megahertz, that's the effective rate, so it's at 1100, uh, you know, double pumped for the DDR3, so it's operating at 2200 megahertz, so that's really cool. Uh, let me give you a quick uh, look over on this board, it's very pretty and you'll notice the plus, that's your plus, that plus is for you. Uh, if you look over here, two six pin PCI Express connectors are the regular uh, that you see nowadays on most of these cards. This is a really nice uh, cooler, I'll give it to that. They did a nice card slot cooling. Uh, if you look over here, as usual, you have two uh, dual link DVIs. And now those are both gonna do 2560 by 1600 maximum resolution. You can go ahead and obviously uh, run dual monitors on here. Not if you're gonna run SLI though, but if you're gonna run a single card, you get that. Uh, you also get, now one of the things on this box, let's see if you can go, go back to the box over here. It says HDMI, see HDMI? That's for a reason, it doesn't have an HDMI, but it does come with this, an HDMI to DVI adapter. So this will do audio, it will go straight to your TV, this will do 1080p, it's not only gonna do 1080i, and then also included in the box if you're old school, you're gonna have a uh, DVI to VGA connector for your older VGA monitors or whatever you may have. Also included in the box, for those of you that don't have the latest and greatest power supplies, are the little adapters uh, for four pin Molex to six pin PCI Express. So that's all very, very cool. Now, uh, you know, you've seen the card. It's very pretty. Everybody wants it. It's more efficient. You can run them in SLI. What do you really want to know? I know what you want to know. You want me to compare this to another card, another card that's on the market in the similar price range. Let's do that. Let's go look at some benchmarks. Let's do it. Benchmarks. All right, first game we're going to look at is World in Conflict. Looking at 1280 by 1024. I'm comparing it against the 4850. Take a look at those benchmarks. 36 frames per second for the 4850, 39 for the 9800 GTX Plus. So that's a little bit of a, a nice percentage increase there. At 1920 by 1200 though, look what happens. We went from 30 to 25, so it dropped on the higher resolutions. So that's kind of a, a weird, you know, interesting thing. Let's take a look at Bioshock. Bioshock has some other uh, pretty interesting benchmarks. 1280 by 1024, we got 77 on the 4850, and we went all the way up to 87 on the 9800 GTX Plus. So that's a nice 12% increase in frame rate. Going to 1920 by 1200, we go from 46 frames per second all the way to 52. That's a 5% increase. It's nothing, nothing to laugh at. That's actually pretty good. Uh, you know, being that the 4850 is so hyped up right now, everybody wants it, and 
people are kind of like, you know, the fanboys from NVIDIA just defected like it was nothing. I mean, like rats jumping off a ship, uh, you know, before it goes down. This is an awesome card, guys, and I'll show you in a little bit. In SLI, it's a, it's a good competitor for the 4850. Let's look at some other benchmarks. Let's go to Crisis. Crisis at 1920 by 1200. Here we kicked it up to a bigger resolution to start with, but we're only playing it on medium instead of on high settings. 43 frames per second for the 4850, uh, whereas the 9800 GTX Plus gave us 46. So we got a little bit of an increase in there. That's an 8% increase. Let's look at 1280 by 1024. That's, this is on high settings, okay? Uh, Anti-aliasing is at 4X, no anthropic filtering, nothing else. Everything else is on high. DirectX 10, obviously, on Vista 64-bit. 35 frames per second for the 4850 versus 37 for the 9800 GTX Plus. So that's a, a couple percent increase. That's pretty, pretty decent. Uh, let's look at the next game, which is Call of Duty 4, one of my personal favorites. I love playing multiplayer online. God, that's fun. It's amazing. I love killing people. Not in the murder way. Uh, looking at this Call of Duty 4, 1280 by 1024. Here we see a drop in performance, 67 frames per second down to 65, negative 2% increase. And at 1920 by 1200, we went from 45 to 43. So they're almost identical. It's not a huge drop. And in case you're thinking that these are, these are expensive, they're not. NVIDIA has dropped prices on this. This is a comparable card to the 4850 in price and in performance. It actually outperformed it in like five of the eight games that we tested. And then the other four, two of which I just showed you right now, it did worse. So I actually didn't even promote the card as much as I could have. But I like the games that I chose because they test different parts. They test uh, some are good for higher resolution, some are good for lower, some are more dependent on the memory, uh, so it's it's different. Uh, let's move on to some very special uh, SLI versus Crossfire benchmarks. This is the 4850 and Crossfire X versus the 9800 GTX and SLI. Uh, I actually picked these up off the net, I didn't do these myself, these are from Guru3D.com. Let's look at the first game, Mass Effect. At, at 1280 by 1024, remember this is two of them, two of each, 92 frames per second, okay? Look what the 9800 GTX did, 106. Sweet, that is awesome. I love NVIDIA, they're doing good. They're back, baby. Looking at 1920 by 1200, we went from 86 to 92. So you're seeing some pretty impressive scaling for SLI versus Crossfire X in some of those games. Let's look at Call of Duty 4, 1280 by 1024. It went from 143 to 119. So Call of Duty 4, which uh, has always run better on ATI, seems to uh, you know reproduce that performance again. SLI is doing a little bit, not scaling as well, uh, but we still got 91 frames per second at 1920 by 1200 on the 9800 GTX Plus in SLI. Last game uh, before we move on, Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2. 1280 by 1024. We took it from 85 for the 4850 in Crossfire X or in Crossfire to 94 frames per second for the 9800 GTX Plus. So that's a nice increase. At 1920 by 1200, it went from 83 to 93. So 10 frames more, that's nothing to sneer at. That's pretty good. Uh, so awesome card. Now, I know that you guys are gonna have a bunch of questions on this because I already get a million questions on everything that I say on this show. So. Go ahead and email me. Make sure you Google it first. You can email me here. If you have any other questions, you know, go ahead and shoot them, but don't forget, go to Google first. And you know, let me give you a, a spiel right now. Anandtech.com, A-N-A-N-D-E, or D-T-E-C-H.com, Tom'sHardware.com, Tweakdown.com, uh, Hardware.net. All these websites have great scientifically, like, insanely benchmarked uh, you know, reviews on all these cards where you can really get all the information. So check those out before you email me. Uh, but you saw it here, the 9800 GTX Plus, awesome card, looks sweet too, by the way. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. For more information on the EVGA GeForce 9800 GTX Plus graphics card, go to CompUSA.com and type in E145-9822 into the search box. Or you can call us 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 1-800-COMPUSA. Thank you.